Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my portrait of Kobe Bryant, the NBA Hall of Famer and one of the best shooting guards of all time. This was done in charcoal with a bit of black colored pencil. Let's get to it. So my tools will be charcoal pencils, woodless charcoal pencils. I'm going to be using two grades, a medium one and a soft one and there's going to be a lot of uh, darker values here and uh, I'm going to need those to achieve contrast with those uh, glistening drops of sweat on his uh, forehead and the top of the head. In addition to the charcoal pencils I'm also going to be using a black colored pencil and this is a Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos black color pencil. I'm going to be using that for some of the edges, for some of the finer lines and some of the textures as well as for the sketching process here. The paper that I'm working on is 190 GSM smooth drawing paper and it's about, uh, it's about 9 times 12 inches in size as usual with most of my portraits. And here I'm switching to a medium charcoal pencil and starting to work on the main part of the drawing process and I'm starting with the ear for no particular reason other than uh, I like to put down some of the darker values first and normally I work from left to right and from top to bottom and because I'm right-handed so first I'm going to start to work on the ear and the top part of the face and then I'm going to be uh, moving slowly to the left and downwards. So one of the things that I like to do is put down some of the areas of darker value, like for example the eyebrows, some of these uh, darker lines uh, around the uh, eyelids to shade the eye socket a little bit, because some of the, those are some of the main parts of the face uh, which are important for the for, for achieving likeness and I'm just putting down a little bit of value uh, inside the socket here uh, on the lower side of the eyebrows and uh, now I'm starting to work on the eye Kobe Bryant's uh, eyes are slightly asymmetrical I think, or at least uh, that's the way they seem in some of the reference photos. I'm going to put my reference photo in the description if you want to check that out. And it's uh, because the, the eyes seem a little bit asymmetrical, one of the eyelids is going to appear like it's drooping a little bit more. Uh, than the other one. Although his eyelids always look like he's um, he's always kind of uh, cool and relaxed. He, he always had that look about him. Uh, some of these top players probably have some psychopathic uh, traits to them. Uh, Michael Jordan had them for sure and Kobe Bryant probably also to a certain degree um, anyway I'm doing the other eyebrow and I'm gonna draw some of these uh, indications of areas of darker value on the top part of the head but first I'm kind of trying to define this area around the ear because that's that area is going to be slightly darker and then I'm going to move on with the shading process. I'm going to do most of the shading process on the dome using a piece of vine charcoal. So this is not a charcoal pencil and I apologize for not, not mentioning vine charcoal at the beginning because in addition to the charcoal pencils obviously I'm going to be using vine charcoal a lot. It's, a, it's an important shading tool for me so once again sorry that, that I forgot to mention it. You can use any brand uh, of a charcoal pencil or any brand of uh, vine charcoal, it doesn't really matter. My only preference when it comes to charcoal pencils is that they can be sharpened without breaking too much. 
So I used a vine charcoal to shade the top part of the head. And let me explain why I did that. First, a vine charcoal is easily moved around. It doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper. And it's a little bit lighter than compressed charcoal and charcoal pencils. And because it's easily moved around, it's also a little bit more easily uh, lifted up using erasers. So you can easily blend it to create some smooth transitions. And I need those here because um, we have multiple source of light, uh, sources of light um, on his uh, head. And um, there are some highlights on his head. And I need some nice transitions between the areas of darker value and lighter value. And another thing that I'll have to deal with is the fact that uh, because this photo was obviously taken in game or during during a game, his uh, forehead and the top of his head is really sweaty and it's glistening. So I'm going to need to draw a lot of these smaller drops of sweat. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to make it quite as complex as the reference photo. I'm not going for photorealism here, but I'm just going to make it realistic and detailed enough so that it looks like look, looks like the real thing, but a slightly simplified version of the real thing. Uh, but here's the thing. In order to achieve that look, that uh, sweaty look, I'm going to need to have a darker uh, background to those drops of sweat first. So, you need to achieve value contrast, and this uh, is important whether you're drawing a person with a darker skin or a lighter skin, it doesn't really matter, because you still need that value contrast. And if you need to achieve that glistening effect with uh, lots of these highlights, like drop, uh, drops of sweat here, you, you're going to need to create a uh, darker looking skin, so that, uh, so that those would stand out. Otherwise, they simply won't be visible and you won't be able to convey that to the viewer. So I keep adding more and more value to the dome and here I'm making also some uh, corrections to the eyes and the whole eye area. But I'm going to be getting back to that over and over again as I'm working on the other parts of the face because uh, obviously as you shade the face you start to realize that maybe you should have put in a little bit more value in some parts of the face which you already think you finished so you have to go back and rework them or at least uh, add a few touches of value or a few details here and there but it's usually nothing dramatic as long as your initial sketch is okay but of course uh, what's more important than the Initial sketch will, of course, be the value contrast and the range of value, which is what I started talking about here uh, when I was shading the top of his head. Uh, but first I'm going to shade a little bit more of his face before I uh, start working on those smaller details like uh, drawing the sweat on, on his forehead. So I'm shading. I'm uh, shading uh, under his eyes and around his eyes a little bit and uh, I'm doing this again with a medium charcoal pencil so if I'm doing all this work with vine charcoal and a medium charcoal pencil you might be wondering uh, what is the what is the soft charcoal pencil going to be for because I mentioned that as well at the beginning and well, uh, I'm going to be using that for some touches of darker value a little bit later. I'm going to go over some areas of darker value with a soft charcoal pencil because that was that one is even darker. But I kind of like to use it sparingly uh, because uh, I use it once I complete most of the shading process most of the time, and uh, I use it to push the range of value just a little bit more. Uh, so that I can create extra depth and extra illusion of volume in my main subject. I'm doing a bit more shading with a piece of iron charcoal and you can see how uh, carelessly I'm covering some of these areas. That's because iron charcoal is going to be blended in anyway and uh, that texture or those lines will not remain so that's not a problem.
Uh, but of course I'm combining that uh, sh uh, sh those shaded areas of vine charcoal with compressed charcoal and adding a bit more value as needed. Uh, but I'm trying not to press too hard. Uh, I'm actually trying to achieve a sufficient amount of value without actually having to press too hard because uh, I'm going to have to do some erasing on the top of the head. Now in some other areas, like for example the eyes and the eyebrows, where you need areas of darker value, you can actually allow yourself to press uh, your charcoal pencil out a bit more because you know that the darker areas are going to be there, so um, you're not going to be doing much to them. But in those areas where I'm going to have to be drawing highlights or where, where I'm going to have to be erasing, I like to be able to actually lift up or move around a little bit of charcoal and if I bury it too much into the grain of the paper that's going to be really really difficult. Now the shading process is sometimes a slow one and even though I compress this video into a sort of a watchable uh, 24 minute video. Uh, this entire drawing process took quite a bit longer obviously because uh, what you often see me doing as I'm doing now is adding more and more value as I keep making progress because often when I shade an area once that area interacts uh, with other parts of the face I realize well, I still need more value and I need more and more and more value and I keep adding value when I until I'm sure that I have enough and another thing is that uh, some parts of the face like for example his cheekbones his cheekbones are really really high and kind of prominent and you'll see me shading that area over and over again until I get the shape to look just right so it's not an easy process even though when you speed it up it looks easy but yeah, the, the, most thing, the most difficult thing about the drawing process is that you kind of keep questioning uh, whether you put enough value and whether you're doing enough to explain the shape to the viewer because in order to explain the shape all I have are my tones darker and lighter tones and I need a sufficient range of value I need to I need to be able to place the right amount of value in the right uh, in the right part of the face and that's why I keep going back and uh, kind of reworking some of the areas like for example I'm reworking the uh, area under the eyebrows now adding more and more value so once you start the shading process or well, that's at least the way it is with me once I start the shading process the amount of value that I have initially is usually not going to be even close to the amount of value that I'm gonna have when I'm done shading and that's one of the things that uh, about my shading process is that I often like to be all over the place as you can see especially in this phase here I like to be all over the place. I start, I start working on some details here, on some details there. I start shading a bit of the face here and a bit of the face there. And that kind of gives me a rough idea about how much more value I'm going to need in different parts of the face. But of course, a different, uh, uh, an important part of the process will be working on the highlights when I kind of start um, defining the topography of the face using erases because then I'm going to be in the process of taking away value from some parts of the face and that will really em emphasize the topography of the face and it will really help to create that three-dimensional look so that the portrait looks like it's popping out of the paper and so that it looks like an actual person. I put down a little bit of value here on the neck and under the jaw. That area needs to be darker. This is nothing for now. I'm going to be shading that quite a bit um, later. So 
that area needs to be darker because the light source is usually coming from above whether you're uh, talking about outdoor or indoor photos the light source is usually coming from above and um, the area under the head under uh, under the chin is going to be uh, quite a bit darker so the neck is usually a lot darker than the head especially the top part of the head the top part of the head is usually a little bit lighter than the a lower part of the head and this is especially the case with Kobe Bryant because he has a little bit of a stubble uh, on this um, on this photo. I'm using my pencil eraser here to draw some of the highlights as you can see and um, I'm using it the same way that I would a charcoal pencil or any other pencil for that matter but now instead of drawing darker lines I'm drawing lighter lines I'm drawing those lines by erasing some of the charcoal and by emphasizing some of the lighter areas by taking away a little bit of the value so when you're drawing a pencil eraser is a drawing tool not a correcting tool and by the way this pencil eraser is a Kohinoor eraser and pencil it's uh, uh, one of my favorite erasing tools. I also use a kneaded eraser here and there and um, like I said even though you're used to using a, an eraser mostly for correcting mistakes when you're drawing or shading and drawing a portrait especially the pencil eraser is a drawing tool and you use it to draw lighter lines and lighter shapes while you use your pencils to draw darker lines and darker shapes. Um, I am slowly moving a little bit more uh, uh, towards the this uh, area uh, where I'm going to be working on some details and now I'm going to be drawing that sweat on his forehead and on the top of his head I'm going to start with some of these darker lines uh, where it looks like drops of sweat are pouring down down his temple, down his forehead and all the way down to his uh, cheekbones and his cheeks. So lots of sweat on his head and after that I'm going to start drawing some of these lighter details, these drops of sweat which are glistening and which are of a lot lighter value and now if you've been paying attention you start uh, finally see uh, why it was so important for me to create a darker background so that these highlights would really stand out because it's not always easy to erase clean lines and these nice clean dots that's why uh, you need to have a sufficient amount of dark value so that these lighter bits, these light spots would really stand out. It is this contrast with the areas of darker value that makes them stand out. If I didn't shade enough they simply wouldn't be visible. It would all look kind of blurry and um, you, it, it would be a little bit difficult for you to understand what's going on and what I'm actually trying to achieve but this way I think it really looks like he, the, the top of his head is sweaty um, and I've also shaded uh, much of the face as you can see I already shaded the lower part of the face but I, I will need to stay, uh, still make uh, quite a few adjustments to some of his facial features I'm still not happy with the appearance of the mouth here and I need to make a few corrections around the eyes and the eyebrows this is a process that will go on pretty much until I finish the entire drawing because I always like to go back and kind of reassess my drawing and um, one of the things that I like to do, this is one of the tricks that uh, you can use is uh, I often like to look at my drawing in a mirror and that way you can look at it um, and see some of the mistakes and distortions 
that you may not have noticed because you keep looking at that drawing and when you look at it in a mirror it looks different so you can not only see some of the things that kind of look asymmetrical and by the way Kobe as I already said has slightly asymmetrical eyes in my opinion but that's not really that important but you can also see some distortions that uh, were kind of made invisible to you because you keep staring at your portrait and another thing that you can do is you can take uh, pictures of your drawing process and you can compare them to your reference photos so you can uh, make a short break from drawing and uh, just reassess your progress I like to take a lot of breaks while I'm drawing not only because I'm recording and uh, uh, because I want to transfer some of the files but also because um, I just find it easier to to um, see or to rather gauge how well I'm doing with a portrait because uh, it's always good to take a short break and get a little bit of rest and look at something else uh, for a change that really helps with the drawing process especially when you're drawing portraits when you're drawing things like landscapes and things like that that's a little bit more relaxing I think and then you can uh, make fewer of those breaks uh, but with pro portraits uh, things can be quite intense so I always advise people to take breaks and as you can see, I added quite a bit of value to this neck because I simply wasn't happy uh, with how dark it was. It, it, uh, as I've already explained, it needs to be a lot darker. And his chin and his jaw also needed to be a lot darker, not only because of the shadow coming from above, but also because, like I said, he has a bit of stubble here. And uh, I needed to shade that. So I'm finishing the work on his jersey as well, mostly using the vine charcoal uh, to create these smooth transitions towards the lighter areas because my portrait is a vignette so I'm going to fade the edges like that and then I put down some finishing touches using a black colored pencil and a charcoal pencil I like to use a black colored pencil in addition to the charcoal pencils because it allows me to clean up some of the details and draw some of the fine lines uh, where maybe a little bit more precision is needed. But I'm pretty much uh, wrapping things up with this portrait and uh, it's starting to look good. I'm just going to keep uh, working on the face a little bit more, adjusting the appearance of those cheekbones, adding a few details here and there, uh, maybe correcting some of the shadows and things like that, until I get it to look as I want to. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, removed the tape and the board that it was taped to, and I've sprayed the drawing with a little bit of fixative here already, so I'm just putting down uh, some of the finishing touches because the drawing is almost done I didn't really get to talk uh, much about Kobe Bryant maybe I'm going to do that in some other video but it's time to wrap things up here I'm going to put my signature in the lower right part of this drawing the drawing process is done I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.